I want to talk about uh, Heard's lead attorney, Elaine Bredhoff. She made some post-verdict interviews as well uh, last week. In fact, I was supposed to sit down with her. She had to cancel last minute, uh, something urgent in court. Uh, we haven't yet rescheduled, but that offer is obviously still out there for her. But I want to give you the opportunity to address some of the things that she did say uh, last week to the media. Uh, she claims that your team demonized uh, Amber Heard and suppressed evidence. What's your response? I think it's disappointing that she would say something like that with respect to suppression of evidence there was a lot more evidence that came in in Fairfax County than ever came in in London and I I took that uh, as not being complimentary of our judge who is a wonderful judge I, I don't think I just think that's an improper characterization as far as demonization the cross-examination of misheard that was done I believe beautifully by Camille Vasquez was not intended to demonize her it really was predicated on her own words so the cross-examination was based on statements that Ms. Heard had made and presenting her with some audios that she herself had made and really asking for her explanation I don't think that's demonization I think that's cross-examination Right. She points to medical records, uh, text messages from Stephen Duders, things like that. Would that have made a difference? Can you enlighten us on? I don't believe any of the evidence that was excluded. And there was evidence excluded on both sides. And you're very familiar. There are rules of evidence that exactly. apply. Not everything comes in. Right. And suppression may not be the best word, too, that she uses, right? It's inadmissible because of hearsay or... They're it's not relevant. Or exactly. And I, I think the, I think Her Honor, you know, played it right down the middle, was very consistent in her rulings. And I, I think it's an improper characterization, and perhaps she just misspoke. Sure. Okay, another thing, uh, Elaine said that this verdict is a huge setback for women. Uh, thinking about reporting domestic violence would send a message that they cannot win. What's your team's response? I think that's entirely untrue. And Mr. Depp would want people to come forward if they were victims of domestic abuse. So I don't think this is a setback at all for women or men who have been victimized by domestic abuse. And I think this is a, I think this is a victory for truth. I think that's, I, I, I don't think it's a setback at all. Elaine also pointed to the jury as possibly even being tainted by the masses of amount of media this was all over social media as you probably know and even blaming the cameras in the courtroom for possibly tainting this verdict what do you think that was almost more disappointing than her statement about evidence being kept out because I construed that as an affront to the jury I mean the jury took an oath as you know not to look at social media and there's no basis that the jury violated their oath and these are people and you saw them every day who gave up six weeks of their lives of their work of their family to pay attention not only to the evidence that mr depp put forward but also to the evidence Ms. her put forward and to cast a shadow on them i think was really unfortunate and and disappointing yeah there was a statement even recently that herd's team released i'm sure you've also read this but i want to get your take the spokesperson for amber says it is as unseemly as it is unprofessional that johnny depp's legal team has chosen to do a victory lap for setting back decades of how women can be treated in the courtroom what's next a movie deal and merchandising that was the latest statement what's your response to that the response to that was one day after the verdict i believe it's one day after the verdict miss bredehoft appeared on national programs uh, to set forth Ms. Hurd's position. So this is a, a response to that. I want to bring back in Chanley Painter, Court TV legal correspondent in New York City tonight. Um, Chanley, did you get any feeling for what the nature of the relationship is between the two legal teams? Is the, I don't even know if they knew each other beforehand, but is it, is it bad blood or is it just, hey, we did battle and, and we move on? 
You know, I, I always have my eye out for inside the courtroom, maybe when the cameras aren't on, when the attorneys arrive in the morning during a recess. You can see them interacting in the courtroom. You can see them interacting in the hallway. Always professional. They do battle when the jury's in there, right? They each have their position they advocate for. But I'm noticing the attorneys um, greeting each other, uh, complimenting each other on what they're wearing, shaking hands. And that's important, I think, to carry that professionalism on. And so even though they have polar opposite points of view, that is important to carry with them and, and, and how he even responded to that. I mean, uh, to Johnny Depp's team, you know, he is the domestic abuse survivor and his story is one that they hope sends a resounding message that inspires any victim, man or woman, to speak up, live their truth, fight for that truth. And of course, you have Amber Heard's team who advocates that she was actually the victim and the jury just didn't believe that version of the story. That's right. Somebody won, somebody lost, and it was very clear at the end of the case.